Hello everybody at the I Project. So here I am in Ecuador on the equator in the middle of the world and I'm, you can see here, I'm in a primary rainforest and that means that this forest has never been cut down and the life here is incredible. There are snakes and tarantulas and over 300 different kinds of bird, including the toucan. And we have an incredible variety of life here. But at this time, with this crazy coronavirus, which we're all experiencing, which is why I'm stuck here in Ecuador with no flights back to England, so I'm unable to come back, which is why I'm giving you this video message from here. But when we look at big crises that have happened in nature before, when the dinosaurs went extinct and um, we've had five big extinctions before. We're currently in the sixth extinction and that's really caused by man. Whereas before, the other extinctions have been caused from meteorites, from volcanic explosions. But nature afterwards has always adapted. It's changed and it's evolved. And that is also what we need to do at this time. And we've got so much really that we could learn from nature. Normally we just learn about nature and we look at a tree and we say, OK, what, what kind of species is this tree? How long does it live for? How tall is it? And we learn about the trees. But what about if we learn from the tree? And we ask the tree questions. We see some trees that are really tall. And we want, you know, if we ask, how do you pump water right to the top of that tree? Because if we wanted to pump water, we'd have a big fireman's hose and you would use a lot of energy to pump that water up there. But if we were to ask the tree, how do you do it? And we look inside and we see a branching system. Look at the branches, if we look at the leaves, if we look at our own veins in our bodies and our own lungs, they have the same pattern of branching. If you're in an aeroplane and you look down on the earth and you see all the rivers, they also have this same branching pattern. And so why is that? And it's because it's the most effective way to move water. To move water from the base of a tree, to suck it up through the tree, through the branches, through the leaves. The best way that nature can do that is through this branching pattern. Now, usually we don't think like that. We have water pipes, we have hose pipes, we have electric cables. and They're all following the same diameter. So it uses a lot more energy. So we can learn from nature in many ways how to become more energy efficient. We can look at nature, look at all the packaging that nature has. The banana skins, eggshells, coconuts. Nature has all sorts of great packaging ideas. But the one difference is nature makes this packaging which does exactly the job to protect what's inside it. And then afterwards, you can throw it on the floor. And it just turns back into compost, back into the ground, and feeds the land again. But what a difference with the kind of packaging that we've developed. We've developed single-use packaging that comes from petroleum plastic. And then we throw it on the floor, and it doesn't go anywhere for a few hundred years. So nature is such a great teacher. It's had 3.8 billion mosquitoes all around me. 3.8 billion years of evolution to work out these things. When I look around here and I see all these beautiful butterflies, in fact at night time the night butterflies, the moths, there's over 950 different species. Can you imagine 950 different species of moths? That's adaption. They've adapted, they've evolved, to all be able to do something different. But one thing that we can learn, sometimes we see them that are so brightly coloured. When I was working in the Amazon, we have the morpho butterfly, 
which is the most beautiful, big, blue, turquoise blue butterfly. And their wings are waterproof and they're brightly coloured. How did nature do that? If we want to dye some clothes, those clothes are dyed with petrochemicals, colours again made from petroleum, which cause lots of damage to rivers, they're very toxic in the dyeing process. How does nature make these beautiful colours? We've got peacocks and the butterflies, so many beautiful colours. So in some universities they're looking at nanostructures. What is it that reflects the light to make these colours? What if we could also make beautiful colours without using toxic dyes? So there are so many ways to look at how we can learn from nature. And this new science is called biomimicry and it's very exciting. And I encourage you to look into it and to find out why are shark skins so important to us at this time? Not only because if you make a swimming costume that is based looking like a shark skin, not from a shark skin itself, then what happens is that that swimmer can swim so fast that it's been banned in the Olympics because they're so aerodynamic how a shark swims. But also, nothing can stick to a shark skin. No bacteria, no viruses, no coronavirus. So if we were to look at the, the kind of plate, the kind of skin that shark has, and we replicated that, it would mean that in hospitals and in restaurants and in schools, no viruses could stick to that surface. But what we do now is we just use lots of antibacterial gels and lots of chemicals and lots of chlorine to keep wiping the surfaces because bacteria and viruses can sit on the surface. Whereas the shark has adapted so that nothing can stick to it. So there's so many ways that we are looking and learning at this time. So I hope that's given you a bit of information about biomimicry and, uh, and I hope you all have a great day. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.